again from Grandma's Storytime. Are you ready for another one of our chapters? Adventures of the Wishing Chair by Enid Blyton. Can I tell you something? Put on your glasses, Grandma. It's the last chapter of this big, big book. Remember what happened in the last two chapters? Mother lost her ring and Chinky did a magic spell and found out that a goblin had been in the yard. And then they went to see the goblin, Big Ears, and he said he'd given it to the Snuggle. Then when they went to see the Snuggle, they got Mother's ring back. But then Chinky was so cranky with that Snuggle, the Snuggle turned around and he bit the four red wings off the wishing chair. Now they can't fly away. Let's read and find out. This chapter is called The Snuggle's Castle. The children and Chinky carried the wishing chair down to the Snuggles' kitchen. This was a big bare stone place with a huge fire roaring in the grate. Chinky stood the chair down on the stone floor and sat in it, looking very gloomily. I know it was my fault that the wishing chair wings were pecked off, he said to the others. Don't cry, Molly. There must be some way to get out of the Snuggles castle. I'm not crying because I'm afraid we can't escape, said Molly. I'm crying because of the poor wishing chair. Is it the end of our flying adventures? It's horror to think we might never have any more. Don't think about that, said Chinky. The first thing is, can we possibly get out of here? Where's the snuggle, I wonder? Quack, quack, here! Said the quacking voice of the duck-headed snuggle, and he looked into the kitchen. If you want any tea, there are cakes in the larder. And you might take some tea and cakes and put them on a plate for me too. I suppose we might as well do as he says, said Peter. He went to the larder and looked inside. He saw a tin there with cakes printed on it. Inside there were some fine chocolate buns. The children put some on a plate for themselves and some on a plate for the snuggle. Molly put the kettle on the fire to boil. They all waited for the steam to come out, but nobody said a word. They were all too unhappy. When the kettle boiled, Molly made tea in two teapots. She took one teapot, cup and saucer and plate of cakes to the Snuggle, who was sitting in the dining room reading a newspaper. It was upside down, so Molly didn't think it was much use to him. But she was too polite to say so. She couldn't help feeling, too, that it would be much better for all of them if they tried to be friendly with the Snuggle. She put the tray down by the snuggle and left him. He opened his great beak before she was out of the room and gobbled up one cake after the other. <coughs> Molly thought he must be a very greedy creature. She went back to the kitchen and she and the others munched chocolate buns and drank hot tea, wondering gloomily what to do next. Perhaps we could swim across the moat, said Molly at last. We'll look and see when we can creep away for a few minutes, said Peter. Listen, said Peter. Listen, said Chinky. What's that noise? <laughs> Went the snuggle in the dining room. Three looked at one another. What about poking around to see if there's another way of escape? Whispered Peter. Come on then, said Chinky. And they all got up. They went to the kitchen door and opened it. It looked straight out onto the moat. How wide and deep and cold it looked. Oh, said Molly. I'll never be able to swim across that, I'm sure. Nor would you, Peter. And look, said Chinky, pointing down at the water. 
There are giant frogs there. They would bite us, I expect. Sure enough, as Molly and Peter peered down into the water, they saw the blunt snouts of many giant frogs. Oh, said Molly, I'm not going to jump in there. I'd say, said Peter, what about the drawbridge? Couldn't we let that down ourselves and escape that way? Of course, said Chinky. Come on, we'll find it before the snuggle awakes. They went through the kitchen and into a big wide hall. They swung open the great front door. A path led down to a gateway that overlooked the moat. The door of the gateway was the drawbridge, drawn up over the entrance. The three ran down to the gate. Chinky looked carefully at the chains that held up the drawbridge. Look, he said, these chains are fastened by a padlock. The drawbridge cannot be let down unless the key is fitted into the padlock and the lock is turned. Then the drawbridge will let down over the moat. Where is the key to the padlock, I wonder? I know, said Peter. The Snuggle has it. I saw a big key hanging from him somewhere. Can't we get it? asked Molly. He's asleep. Let's try. They tiptoed into the dining room. The Snuggle was certainly very fast asleep. I guess we can get the key without waking him, whispered Chinky in delight. Where is it? They looked all around the Snuggle for the key, but they couldn't see it. And then, at last, Peter saw it, or part of it. The Snuggle was sitting on it. They could just see the head of the key sticking out from underneath him. No good, said Chinky, shaking his head and tiptoeing out. We should certainly wake him if we tried to pull the key out that he's sitting on it. I suppose that's why he sat on it, to stop us getting it. Anyway, I expect the drawbridge would have made an awful noise rattling down on its chains, said Peter gloomily. The snuggle would have heard it and woken up and come after us. What shall we do now, said Molly in despair. We can't swim the moat. We can't unlock the drawbridge and let it down. There's one thing we might try, said Chinky. I might try to whistle one of the birds down to a windowsill and tell it our dreadful fix. It would fly back to Pixie Land and perhaps the king would send to rescue us. You never know. Yes, do that, said Molly, cheering up. The children and the pixie went up the stairs and into the, a bedroom. They leaned out of the open window. Below lay the silvery moat. Chinky began to whistle. It was a soft whistle, but a very piercing one. <coughs> Molly felt sure that if she had been a bird, she would have come to answer Chinky's whistle. Chinky stopped whistling. He looked anxiously into the sky and waited. No bird came. No bird to be seen. I'll try again, said Chinky. He whistled once more. They waited, looking everywhere for a bird. There are no birds in this Snuggle County, said the pixie with a sigh. One would have come if it could. Well, said Molly, looking worried, whatever can we do now? There doesn't seem to be any way of escape at all nor any way of getting people to help us. Let's go into each of the rooms, upstairs and downstairs, and see if there is anyone there, said Chinky. We might find a servant, or someone. They might help us. You never know. So the children and the pixie went into each room, one by one. They were queer, untidy rooms. It looked as if the Sniggle lived in one for a bit, and then it when it became too untidy, he went to another one and lived in that until the same thing happened. There was no one at all in any of the rooms. Only the Snuggle lived in the castle and that was plain. We have been in many fixes, 
said the pixie gloomily. But this is about the tightest fix we've ever been in. How I hate the snuggle for pecking the wings off our dear old wishing chair. The children and Chinky went down into the kitchen again. The snuggle was no longer snoring in the dining room. He must be awake. He was. He came into the kitchen, snapping his duck beak and waving his cat's tail. Well, quack, 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 he said with a grin. Been all over the castle to find a way of escape? Quack, quack, quack. Uh, you won't find that in a hurry. Well, as you're here, you may as well wait on me. I'm tired of doing my own cooking and washing up. You can do it for me. We won't then, said Peter furiously. It's bad enough to have to be here without waiting on a duck-headed creature like you. Hush, Peter, said Molly suddenly. Hush! Very well, Snuggle. We'll do as you say. Where would you like your supper? There's a cloth in the drawer, but it's dirty. Have you a clean one so I can start to get your supper for you? You're a sensible girl said the snuggle, pleased. I have a clean cloth upstairs. I will get it. He went out of the room. Chinky and Peter turned and stared at Molly in amazement. What did she mean by giving in so meekly to the horrid snuggle? Peter, Chinky, look, said Molly, and she pointed to the wishing chair where it stood in the corner of the kitchen. The others looked and whatever do you suppose they saw? Guess. The wishing chair was growing new wings. Yes, really. Tiny red buds were forming on its legs. They grew fast and they burst into feathers and they were growing into new strong wings. Goodness, said Peter and Chinky amazed. Who would have thought of that good old wishing chair? Quick, here comes the snuggle. Put the chair behind the table where he can't see the wings are growing, said Molly. So Chinky pushed it behind the table just in time. The snuggle patted in and held out a clean cloth to Molly. Thank you, said little girl politely. And have you got some egg cups, please? I will boil you some eggs for supper. The snuggle trotted out to fetch some egg cups. And as soon as he was gone, Molly, Peter and Chinky crowded into the wishing chair. Home! As quickly as you can! shouted Chinky. And the chair flapped its new red wings and rose into the air. The snuggle came running into the kitchen. He quacked with rage. Quack, 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 quack. He tried to get hold of the chair as it flew past him. Chinky kicked out at him and caught him on his big yellow beak. The snuggle gave a squawk and sat down suddenly. <coughs> goodbye, goodbye, dear snuggle, yelled Chinky, waving his hand. Do call in and see us when you're passing, and we'll give you a clean cloth for your tea and boil you some eggs. The chair flew home at a gate rate. At last it came to the playroom and flew into it. It set itself down on the floor and its wings gave one more flap and vanished. Ha! <laughs> the old wishing chair is tired, said Chinky. I don't wonder. I hope it will soon grow its wings again. We do have some adventures, don't we, children? Where's Mother's ring, Chinky? asked Peter, suddenly remembering why they had gone adventuring. It was to get his mother's lost ring. Here you are, said Chinky, and he gave Peter the ring. Won't your mother be pleased? She won't guess what a lot of adventures we had getting her ring back for her. Peter and Molly ran off happily. They called their mother and gave her the ring. You had dropped it in the garden, mother, said Peter. Thank you, said mother. But she didn't guess that Big Ears the Goblin had stolen it and that the Snuggle had had it too. No, that was the children's secret.
and that's the end of the story. I hope you liked it. I'll have to have a look for some more books or we might find a different story. Goodbye. Have a look on my channel and you'll find the next one. Bye bye.